We are to have a referendum on Scottish independence. Why? Yes, why? Scottish parliamentary elections 2011. Big victory for the SNP, a victory that they didn't expect to that extent. Up 23 seats. Look at the voting share, up 13 points. Everybody else down. But remember also the preceding year, UK general election 2010 in Scotland. Look at that. Labour outpolled the SNP, increased their vote by comparison with elsewhere. So the question is, will the referendum be 2010 or 2011 in Scotland? That reminds you, Salmond is not impregnable. He is not invincible. So what happened that, that made 2011 different? Well, Alex Salmond fought a very good campaign, etc., etc. He built upon the, the idea of being Scottish. But to be clear, those 2011 voting figures that's not an independence vote. It does not correlate directly with independence. But at the very least, attempts by the unionist parties to, to scare people away, to say if you vote for him at Holyrood, it'll be independence next. It didn't work. It used to work in the past, and this is really important. The SNP was so stunned by this victory that they commissioned internal research to find out why they won. They were so <laughs> astonished by the scope of it that they commissioned and they found one big thing. There used to be a tranche of Scottish opinion, about 25 to 30 per cent, that was so hostile to independence that they slammed the door in the face of any canvasser. Some poor guy is coming around trying to get votes for the, the, the muckle flogger council and he says, no, you're a gnat, slam, don't want to listen. And that's changed. That has declined and not entirely gone away, but, ha but has reduced. They don't slam the door anymore. They will listen. I will take your opinions on health policy at Holyrood. I will take your opinions on local government policy. I still don't support independence, but come and listen to me. So that you, you're, getting past, you're getting past the doorstep, you're getting over the doorstep. So what was hostility is now scepticism. That still means that that doesn't necessarily translate into an independence vote. You heard the figures that, that Helen gave, but they are skeptical rather than overtly hostile. And the other reason is they've had four years of the SNP being in power and the sky hasn't fallen in, and they have given them the ultimate, ultimate Scottish praise. Alex Salmond has done no bad. The ultimate praise. So when might a referendum be called and what might be asked? Alex Salmond has now stated his chosen preference is for a referendum in 2014. It's an anniversary, of course, isn't it? The Battle of Bannockburn, 1314. You'll hear it said he's chosen 2014 because he wants to mark 700 years since the Scots got a result on that occasion. Um, diplomacy prevents me from mentioning who the opponents were on that particular occasion. <laughs> well, that's maybe. I don't, I don't believe this myself. Alex Salmon doesn't think like that. I think he's got another date in mind. That one. He wants a contest in as close as possible to the next UK general election because he believes that by then his unionist opponents will be fighting each other rather than fighting independence and Alex Salmon. He wants to sow dissent among them which is one reason why the Conservatives, the Liberal Democrats, and the Labour Party are so keen to get on with the ballot, and they say, give the people their say and get, get on with it right away. So let's get to the rub of the matter. Why does Alex Salmon not call a referendum tomorrow? Answer, because he fears he might lose. So why doesn't David Cameron step in and call a referendum tomorrow? Answer, he fears he might lose. Let's consider firstly the case of the, the First Minister. He promised to defer the referendum. It's absolutely true. In a BBC debate, he promised to defer the referendum to the second half of the present parliament. We need to consider why he made that promise. To consider the, 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 the exegesis rather than the genesis. Well, there's that point about cohesion within the, the unionist camp. Further, Alex Salmon calculates that by late 2014, it may appear that the Conservatives are about to govern the UK on their own. And he wants to make the contest seem as, it is, as if it is a choice between independence on the one hand and the Tories on the other hand, not independence and the Union, but independence and the Tories, because the Tories are not exactly a good sell in Scotland. Their marketing rate is still less than stellar. Another point is the clincher in my view. Alex Salmond believes that right now with the economy in an utter bloody mess is not the time to call a referendum. There are, there are two sets of opinions within the SNP. There is the flight argument that you, you flee from, from you know, if, if you, 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 you see London government in, in disarray, you flee from it. Scotland escapes from it. Salmon has never believed that, never taken that view. He believes that Scots will only vote for independence 
when they feel self-confident, when they feel that independence is feasible, when they feel that the economy could just possibly be better, and he knows that isn't a sell you can make at the present moment. It may not be a sell you can make in 2014, but he wants to give it as much of a chance as possible. And he saw that coming, and that's why he made the promise during the election campaign. Now, let's take the other side of the coin. UK ministers complain about delay. Nick Clegg says that Alex Salmond is playing cat and mouse with the Scottish people. In which case, you could say to Nick Clegg, get a dog, sort it out. Call the referendum yourself. Why don't they do so? Because they hesitate. They think that Alex Salmond would then call foul. He would cry, foul. He would cry that, the, 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 that this was unwarranted interference by the UK government. And the Scots might just accept that. They might just see that argument. And they might just decide in those circumstances to give a bloody nose to a government led by a party with only a single MP in Scotland, a constituency about the size of Belgium, but there's only one of him. So instead of calling their own referendum, which they are perfectly entitled to do, UK ministers urged Mr. Salmon, get on with it. Go to the people. Why delay? And they used that as a, as a bargaining counter to try and get their real objective, which is to get the right question on the ballot paper. There's other things being equal. I think it is currently most likely the referendum will be in October 2014, as Alex Salmond wants, because the UK ministers have got to think of a, a question of priorities. For the UK Prime Minister, does he really, really want to pick a huge fight and bring forward the referendum 300 days? Or would he rather get the wording correct and defend a union that's lasted 300 years? I don't think that's much of a difficulty for you. I think it's a fairly easy question. Not an easy question is the next one. What do we ask? That's his, that's his chosen question. Do you agree that Scotland should be an independent country? Straightforward, simple, except it's not. Uh, the word agree, according to sophologists, is a welcoming word. It draws people in. People like to agree. They don't like to disagree. So the word there is good. There's something missing from that question as well, isn't there? Yes, it's the union. The union is missing. There's no mention of it whatsoever. No mention that becoming an independent country ends that union of 300 years. Quite deliberate, of course. Mr. Salmon doesn't want to stress that. He wants to stress the independent and free element. So I, I think that, that that will be challenged and is being challenged very vigorously. So... But there's another issue. The, this independence option, whatever the question eventually emerges, will be set up by the Scottish Government in a prospectus, which they will publish. If they get their timetable of October 2014, they'll publish the prospectus around roughly November, December 2013, setting out in detail what independence means from their perspective, what it means for Europe, what it means for the UK, what it means on funding, what it means for the monarchy, which is retention, what it means for whatever. They will set that out in relative detail, not the detail that... Their opponents would want, I'm sure, they'll set out the stuff about the currency and all of that as well. But they currently say they are open to the inclusion of other options in the prospectus and thus on the ballot paper. Could it be this one, Devo Max, which was set out that an earlier Scottish Government white paper, full control of tax spending and all laws, with defence, foreign affairs and currency shared, the idea being a subvention from the Scottish Government to the UK to pay for those common funds. Or might it be this one, Devo Plus, uh, advanced by a think tank, Reform Scotland, who intriguingly developed from conservative activists. Devolve welfare, except pensions, control income tax and corporation tax, but keep VAT and, no and national insurance reserved, and share deficit borrowing. So Scotland would get a share of the deficit borrowing and be responsible for that, and thus have an incentive to drive it down. Um, it's being looked at now by a cross-party panel, including Labour, Lib Dem and Conservative MSPs on their own basis, but the parties remain very, very cautious only at the weekend. Both Joanne Lamont and Ed Miliband saying if you transfer corporation tax to Scotland, you might end up with competition, you know, driving down the, task, the, the, the cost between Scotland and England, driving down the tax take and thereby driving down the capacity to spread resources and, and thus help the poor counter to Labour's objectives. But I, I think despite that, a joint campaign to defend the union there will be, a hesitant, uh, awkward beast it may be. I think it'll be involving Alistair Darling, uh, uh, Charlie Kennedy and Annabel Goldie as the advisory group and beneath that there'll be a sort of directorate running things on a day-to-day -day basis and I think they'll get up as, and running as quickly as they can because as Salmon said, Salmon plans to launch in late May with his team, his uh, independence roadshow. So why does Alex Salmon favour a Second question, why Devo Max, Devo Plus, why not just go for independence, which is the one he has the, the mandate for? He wants a fallback. He wants a parachute, should independence fail to win. 
Secondly, he hopes to divide the unionist camp. He knows that that in particular, and even Devo Max, is potentially very attractive to the Liberal Democrats and thus possibly to Liberal Democrat voters. Now, the unionist parties are not dumb. They are alert to this potential for division, and so they are trying to stay as close together as they can. But that is why you are seeing rather awkward wordings from the Prime Minister and others about more powers. It's because they're trying, shuffling towards each other to try and find a common ground that doesn't allow Alex Salmond to pick them off and say, see, the Libs are going far down the road of federalism. They, why, why would they go with, would go with Labour and the Tories? They're, they're closer to our position. So you, you, you're hearing hints, but what they want to do is they want to say, we'll come to that later. Settle independence. Now we say no to independence, but it's no but. And the but is, we'll get back to you later with what the but is. Now, that may not survive as a strategy. They may have to put more detail on it between now and 2014, if it is in 2014. Still and all, most opinion polls, as Helen mentioned, suggest that the Scots prefer the union to independence. Alex Salmon knows that a straight defeat in a referendum on independence would be very difficult for his party. Huge stresses and strains upon a party that has been incredibly self-disciplined since winning power in, in Holyrood. And he says that you could have these two questions on a referendum in sequence. You know, first of all, do you fancy Devo Max and more powers? And if you do fancy that, do you also fancy as an add-on independence? Some nationalists say it's like, do you fancy bacon and eggs? And would you like sausage and beans as well, as if the two could be in sequence. And he compares it to 1997, when the Scots were asked, do you want a parliament and do you want tax varying powers? Well, it would have been mildly amusing in 1997 if the Scots had said yes to the tax varying powers, but no to the parliament to set it up. But Alex Salmon knows very well that those questions were contingent upon each other. This is different. So you could put Devo Max on the ballot paper as an alternative. You know, do you want change? If you want change, do you want Devo Max or do you want independence? I think there's a problem with that as well, again. The problem is this. This is not a vague test of public opinion. It's a referendum to determine where Scotland goes. And referendums are about putting a proposition by a government and having that create a mandate. Independence creates a mandate for the Scottish government to negotiate the end of the United Kingdom in a settlement with the UK government. What is Devo Max mandate? Whom does it mandate? Does it mandate the Scottish government? No, nope, they can't do it. It's got to be Westminster. Does it mandate Westminster? No. They don't agree on that position. They don't want it on the ballot paper in the first place. They want a straight yes or no. So I think we're stuck with that at the moment, the, the, the unionist parties tiptoeing towards some form of common ground. Mr. Salmon still trying to play them off each other and, and get a, a second question. And of course, the demand for issues like 16 or 17 year olds to have the vote, all sorts of arguments. My guess is, my absolute guess, is that it is still more likely that it will be October 2014 and it will be a single question. Alex Salmon gets his way on timing and that the Prime Minister gets his way on a single question, and Mr. Salmon concedes it grudgingly by saying, I wanted to give you, the Scottish people, a range of options, but all these wicked people stopped me. I think that's where we are, but we're not there yet. When the, when the Act of Union was finally carried by the Scottish Parliament in 1707, the, the then Chancellor, the Earl of Seafield, placed his finger upon the document and said, that's an end to an old sang, an end to an old song. Well, the song has got a remix now. It's being heard again in Scotland, but it's being heard again at the moment without very much evidence of harmony.